What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. Um, I really wanted to do a follow-up video on the blood work video. On the blood work video. Um, I had a lot of comments saying like, how are you gonna try and fix these? What are the things that you're gonna do to try and improve your blood work even though you're on cycle? Um, so I'm just gonna go through the blood work essentially and I'm gonna say what I need or don't need to address. And I've got a few things here that we're gonna show you on camera and, and just explain what they do and potentially how they can help. Um, so we're just going to start at the top and we're going to go through it. So first up on the list, red blood cells. So for me, like hemoglobin, hematocrit, it's a little tiny bit high, but it's not high enough for me to cause, uh, to have a, a, co a cause for concern. My blood pressure is fine. I check my blood pressure every morning. I'm still in a very, very good place. Um, I also got sent a link. Now this is a very, very interesting link. For as long as I've been bodybuilding and using steroids, I've always been told I need to donate blood to reduce my hematocrit level or my hemoglobin level. According to this link, now I'm gonna put it in the top of the comments, so check it out. Testosterone-induced high hematocrit or hemoglobin is actually not uh, bad for you. It doesn't actually cause like uh, coagulation of the blood or potential blood clot risk increases. Uh, now I'm gonna completely butcher it, so I don't wanna go into like, the details of what he said, but it basically says it induces a condition where it puts the marker higher. It wasn't too, too, too sure in it, so. I've always donated blood on one cycle. I still think it's probably quite a good thing to do every now and again is to take out a load of blood and, and kind of recycle it. But directly from cycle, I don't know. Uh, so please don't take it as gospel, but just check out the link. It's, it's a 10, 15 minute video of a, of a very highly educated person, um, a doctor of this very specific study, uh, this very specific topic. So check it out. So for me, my blood my blood level is, is fine. I've got nothing to address that. And if anything, being a little bit higher, I'm gonna have a bit more performance now. So white blood cells, a uh, blood clotting was all green, so we don't need to address that. The next thing to address is gonna be kidney levels. Now, obviously I had a pretty decent EGFR. Well, I say decent, it was 69 on paper. That's only a little bit above having a, an issue. However, there is a, a slightly more accurate way of calculating it if you use your BMI. So I've come to a different website here, which actually calculates, and I was provided this by Dr. Dean, by the way, uh, through uh, Louis Blackmore. So Louis, if you're watching, thank you very much for this. And it's basically a, a, a slightly more accurate version of your EGFR based off your BMI, which, which actually helps. So you go to clincalc.com, um, or what I typed in is type in clincalc EGFR calculator, and it comes up and it takes into consideration uh, your age, your gender, your race, your height, your weight, uh, your creatinine levels, and then you can get a more accurate level. And my EGFR actually comes out at 100 mil um, versus 69, uh, which is what I was given. So it's a lot higher based off my BMI. I don't know if it's BMI because it doesn't take into account how much muscle you've got and stuff, but I've been told that this is a more accurate version. So either way, my kidney markers weren't too bad. Creatinine is going to come down with taking creatine now. It's going to come down with taking a few days off before the gym as well. So one thing that I do actually use for uh, my kidneys uh, is Astrag Flow by Supplement Knee. So this has high dose astragalus, which has been shown to help with kidney function. You need like around eight grams of it per day. So you, I do need to take eight of these tablets a day. Otherwise, it's pretty difficult. You can get a powder which works, which works better, but this also helps regulate blood pressure. It also helps just the filtration of your kidneys and it gives you a little bit extra support. We've got 8,000 milligrams or eight grams of astragalus, 1.5 grams of beetroot extract, 900 milligrams of hawthorn berry, 500 milligrams of goldenrod. Now, all of these things facilitate uh, the support of the kidney a little bit, and this is something that I would highly recommend as a uh, non-negotiable in, in someone who's cycling. So liver. Now, liver was one thing that I was slightly concerned about. Uh, I thought about it a little bit more, and uh, I completely forgot that I had surgery like 10 days before this. <laughs> uh, so I would have been dosed full of uh, fentanyl. I was dosed full of morphine at one time. And then of course I was using codeine and paracetamol in pretty high doses for like three days afterwards. So I can, I can massively imagine that that had a pretty decent impact on my, uh, on my liver enzymes. So that is probably why my liver enzymes were high, not from two cocktails before, which is not what I was trying to insinuate. I was trying to insinuate that there's something else that had pushed the liver up a little bit there. So it's probably from those painkillers. Either way, um, similarly to the Astrag flow, that's gonna help with the kidney support. We have a liver stack here, which is gonna help with liver support here. So 800 milligrams of Tuka, 1000 milligrams of Oxbow, 800 milligrams of Choline, and 800 milligrams of Incitol, so, or in, in, in Nocitol. So, 
things that are gonna help uh, recover the liver, but also just offer some support in, in, in the stages that the liver goes through to, in order to, to, to detoxify yourself. So something to consider um, is obviously supporting your organs whenever you can do. Um, but ultimately, uh, I'm not happy with that liver enzyme marker, but we'll just retest that again and make sure we can, we can bring that down. Uh, so cholesterol, this is the one thing that I was probably worried about, if that makes sense, because I know that using anabolic steroids is gonna affect your cholesterol status. I know that, it, this is gonna be dark right now, but like my, my granddad and my dad have both had like pretty bad heart attacks. My granddad died from a heart attack. My dad's had two heart attacks. So I know that like having a poor cholesterol status with my genetic history, and obviously you guys know that I had that, not heart issues, but I was having heart palpitations, which turned out not to be heart pal palpitations. So it's something that I am conscious about when it comes to um, kind of like longevity and things. Obviously I'm still taking the risk, that's, that's part of my decision, but cholesterol was something that I really wanted to to improve. Now, uh, I probably wasn't a little bit, I did, probably didn't emphasize how poor my nutrition was for probably eight weeks post, post prep. 50% of every single meal of, sorry, of every single day was, was the delivery. There's no two ways about it. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. Like I was eating like shit. Uh, I, I still obviously look all right for it. That's not, that's not the issue, but this is where, this is where you can see what you're actually doing, right? And this shows the dangers of unhealthy eating um, for a very long period of time, as well as obviously use of anabolic steroids. So I've come from a position where I've been using high anabolics, where my cholesterol status is gonna be compromised to a post-show I don't want to call it a binge because I fully knew what I was doing. I was in control, you know, but if you're in a place of poor cholesterol from steroids post comp and then you eat shit foods with high cholesterol, of course, it's only going to make that whole marker worse. Of course it is. Um, and I guess I was ignoring it, but I kind of knew it was going to be there in the background. I was kind of just hoping it was going to be okay. But uh, dude, I, guys, I was, I was eating shit like, we're talking whatever I wanted every single day in abundance, whole tubs of ice cream, you know, all sorts of things with really poor nutritional value, but really high cholesterol, triglycerides, things that just aren't very, very good for you. So I know why these are poor. So I would like to think, and this is obviously my goal, and this is as soon as I saw these, my whole mindset changed and I realized what I was doing to myself. Like I've not, I've barely eaten an off-plan meal. I say that I had, I had something this morning, but I probably had one or two off-plan meals, maybe three if I can count going away this weekend since this blood since this blood test, which was about two or three weeks ago now, versus every single day, because I knew that the food I was putting in my body wasn't helping. So now the food I put in my body, I don't want to say healthier because I'm still eating a shit ton of food, like four or 4,700 calories, but it's from clean foods. Like I'm not having loads of processed foods. I'm not having things that are heavy in cholesterol. No more tubs of ice cream right now. Um, and I think that a dietary intervention is the first thing that everyone should be looking at when to improve their blood work. That is the majority of what we put in your body. All these fancy supplements are great, cool, but they ain't gonna do shit if you've got a poor diet. So that's the most important thing that I've changed here is clean foods, um, healthy fats, lots of things to try and support the cholesterol status. But I have got a few things here that you guys can look at. Uh, this is just CV stack. Obviously a uh, supplement needs the company that have, have done these three here, have absolutely uh, covered our basis here, which is obviously really, really good. But the CV stack here is it, 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 things that can help regulate your HDL and bring it up, but it's also things that can help regulate your LDL by bringing that down. So uh, things in here like olive leaf extract, citrus bergamot, citrus bergamot has been proven to really, really help. There's some very, very good studies into citrus bergamot um, and there's some allicin in here as well. So this is something that I take alongside red yeast, uh, red, red yeast rice extract. I don't think it's an extract, but it has CoQ10 in here as well. Now, this is something that can directly, can directly remove LDL and, and reduce LDL. And this is something that I've used before in the past and we've seen positive uh, positive effects to my LDL cholesterol. This is something that I'm gonna reintroduce and, and just take religiously. Um, I take two of these tabs every single day along with all of these here as well. Um, and it's just something that can help a little bit more directly. I also use metformin. I, I think that metformin can have a little bit of an impact on your, on your lipids. I'm not 100% sure about that. The reason why I don't, talk, I've said this in my last, uh, my last video, the reason why I don't talk about like metformin or maybe some of the ancillary drugs that you hear me take, uh, hear me take is because I don't know enough about them to talk about them confidently. So I try and stay away from them, but I also use metformin, which, which may help as well. So uh, the cholesterol is something that I really want to bring bring about and improve. My HDL, I'm not so worried about because it is pretty close to when I was natural. 0 0.8 is still not great, but it, I was 0.99 or something when I was natural. So considering I was off of, I was, I was, 
eight weeks post cycle and obviously all that food. I wasn't displeased with it, but it was the LDL and the ratios that I wasn't happy with. So this also gives me an indication that I'm gonna go, go get some further detail score. I haven't had my echocardiogram for this year. So I tend to get an echocardiogram every single year. It's basically like a mapping of the, of the heart. It will see if you've got any plaque buildup. It will see if, you, actually, I actually don't know if it does that, but it will see like the size of your heart if there's any ventricular hypertrophy. And then I'm also gonna try and get a calcium score towards the end of a year, which hopefully will give me a little bit more indication as to the state of my, my arteries and heart. And, and I can feel, I can feel why people don't want to do it because part of me wants to remain ignorant to it because I don't want the score to come back like, you have to stop this shit now, you know? So part of me wants to just be like, all right, don't do it then. Just carry on and be ignorant. But I know that that is a very silly move. And I know that the position I'm in, like I only want to show the right moves or my perceived right moves that is. So. I'm, I'm gonna do them and I'll say what the answers are and the results are on the channel, obviously, um, but I'll probably do that towards the, the end of the year. So something else uh, that we know is really, really good for cholesterol, HDL specifically, is some omegas. Um, I really like krill oil. Um, also this wild Alaskan full spectrum omega is really good from Solgar. Um, also support max is another thing that will support pretty much everything with vitamin D in here, magnesium, selenium, you're getting some key metals in there, which which a lot of people overlook. CoQ10, Tudka, it, which has also got in some of these as well. This is like an all-in like an all-in-one organ support, support max by Strom, um, which can offer some support across, uh, across all of your organ systems. Now, all of these supplements you can get from Insight Supplements and you can use Josh10 for discount um, across the whole website. It's, a, it's an amazing brand where and it's amazing for me because I don't have to be like, yeah, this is the best brand because the brand Insight does not stock Insight supplements. It stocks supplement needs. It stocks Strom. It's, it stocks Solgar. You know, it stocks everything that you can imagine. Uh, different brands under an Insight, which is just amazing for me. So check out the website um, and, and, and use Josh Tan for discount. Um, so finally, uh, there's nothing else really to ad address on the... Uh, on the blood panel. Um, creating kinase from muscle health is, is gonna be sky high and 99.9% .9 of bodybuilders and you're training like a pussy. Uh, they're always gonna be pretty high, so I don't worry too much about uh, creating kinase. Uh, it can definitely come down with just some rest. So I'm, 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 what I'm gonna do is, uh, so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take these supplements, I'm gonna correct my diet as much as I can. I'm gonna be absolutely on point with everything. I'm gonna reintroduce my cardiovascular work every single rest day and we're gonna try and improve these blood works and I'm going to get them all redone in probably a four to six week period. You have to remember in order to see improvements on your blood work, you have to give yourself some time to 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 improve it. It's not going to happen in a week or two weeks, but it may happen, you know, three, four, five, six weeks down the line. So uh, I'm not a doctor. Um, I can't offer you too much advice on this. This is just my my side of things and this is how I'm going to improve things. This is not a foolproof plan. Um, we'll see if it works in, in, in three or four weeks. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys found some value in it. See you soon. Peace.